Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Casca and in today's video I'm going to be making the underskirt and overskirt for my 1880s outfit. In my last video I finished the bodice for this outfit which was based on this sketch which I have now redrawn because the last one was a little bit messy and in today's video we're going to be completing this outfit. For the underskirt, I'm going to be using a pattern from Authentic Victorian Fashion Patterns. I know that book is 1890s, but flipping through it, I noticed that at the very beginning for 1890, 1891, they did have some skirts that looked like they'd go over bustles. For the overskirt, I'll be using this pattern from Truly Victorian. One of the things that I've noticed from looking at fashion plates and watching videos from other people is that there was an emphasis on asymmetry in like 1886, 1887, that kind of time. So this pattern works perfectly for that. I might be a bit tight on fabric. That's the only thing. I thought I'd ordered more of the grey fabric than I did and it was only when I was laying it out to cut out the little pieces for the bodice that I realised that I'd only actually ordered, I think it's about three metres. So there may be some piecing involved, there may have to be some seams where I didn't want there to be some seams, but we will make it work. <laughs> I've pieced together the pattern pieces for the Truly Victorian over skirt. Looking at it I think I should be safe for the plaid fabric. The only way I'm going to know if I've got enough fabric though is to actually make the thing, so let's crack on. I'm very glad that these pattern pieces include seam allowance because it just fits. I cut out all my pieces for the underskirt. To get everything to fit I ended up having to have a seam down the centre front. This will be covered by the overskirt though so it's not the end of the world. I serged all my edges and then stitched together all my panels. I did have pockets because you can't not have pockets in a Victorian skirt. I did forget to film it though. I pressed my seams and stitched my darts, then I added the waistband. The back of the skirt was pleated up into it. I didn't use any math for this, I just eyeballed it. This video is going to be mostly voiceover, I'm afraid. I was having the angriest skin day and I didn't want to be putting makeup over it multiple days in a row. I know I shouldn't feel like I have to wear makeup, but trust me, it looked proper gnarly and this video wouldn't get any likes if I subjected you to that. The waistband was stitched along the front, then flipped over, and the back side was attached by stitching in the ditch. Lastly for the underskirt, I folded the hem up twice and then added a couple of hooks and eyes. And that fits quite nicely, got plenty of room. There's also loads of fabric left over there for the other piece, so... I think we are definitely okay for fabric for the overskirt. Right. 
Right, everything is cut out, everything is surged, apart from the top edge which will be going into the waistband. I just want to talk a little bit about this part on the back. Because as you can see, it goes up and then down again. And it tells you on the pattern to cut into it. I was a little bit confused because I saw that it was, I had to do a bornos or bornus or I, well, I don't know I don't know how to pronounce that word pleat but from looking it up it seems like it's actually pretty straightforward so all I need to do is fold this over twice so that it's so that it's hemmed and then these bits get sewn together and this bit is just left loose so yeah, that's not too bad actually, that's reasonably easy. These bits are pleated down into the waistband and then on this side I have marked where all my pleats need to go. So I've got that one and that one and, and so on. I've got, I've also got all my pleats marked on the front section as well so this should be reasonably straightforward I will check back in with you again if I get lost at any point I added the pleats to the side of the front and back panel. They weren't too bad. I usually end up faffing for ages with pleats, but these lined up really nicely. The front and back were attached together. I did some tacking stitches rather than just using pins because I thought it would be easier to get the pleats to all lie flat. The layers were super thick by this point and I was a bit worried that my machine might struggle. It seemed to handle it okay though. I pleated up the top front, then hemmed all the way around the bottom and the sides.
The waistband was added and the back was pleated up to fit into it, leaving out those Bolner's pleats? I'm still not sure how to say that. Finally, I stitched the inside of the waistband by hand and then added a skirt hook and it was done! Oh my god guys, I am so, so, so happy with how this went. I couldn't envision it looking any nicer. I'm so happy with how the reveal footage turned out. Being able to prance around in the Botanic Gardens dressed like that. I had so many little kids come up to me and want to have their picture taken with me and stuff like that. It was adorable. I was getting so many compliments off people, it was so nice. Construction wise for the skirts, they were really easy to put together. The underskirt was just a five panel skirt, pleated up at the back, simple waistband. When I originally looked at the pattern for the overskirt, it was quite daunting with all those pleats. But the instructions that came with the Trini Victorian pattern really easy to follow. I was able to put it together quite quickly. And yeah, I'm so pleased with how it looks. I think the asymmetric style really, really looks nice. You may have noticed since my last video that I've made some little adjustments to the bodice. I do want to replace these covered buttons though and redo them because there were some cheap ones that I got off Amazon and I'm wondering if maybe if I just put a bit of glue in there it'll help, but some of them are starting to come a bit loose. So sometimes it's not good to go the cheaper route. <laughs> I also made myself a little hat. Uh, I used this truly Victorian pattern for this. It went together quite well. I'm quite pleased with it. I think I probably will reinforce it a bit more next time. I skipped putting the wire down this bit and it's ended up kind of crumpled in a little bit being in my bag. But I think it really helps to tie the outfit together. I'm really pleased with it. The project as a whole, I think has been really successful. I've now got all the appropriate undergarments to make any second bustle era outfit that I want. So that's great. Next one I do, I don't have to go through the whole making the bustle and the petticoat again. The corset, I love and I'm, it is well and truly seasoned now. 
It's one of my favourite corsets. I wear it every opportunity I have to wear a corset. The underwear as well, I that, that underwear I can wear with pretty much any historical costume really. Like it doesn't really go out of date <laughs> and it's super, super comfy. So yeah, as a whole, I think this project has been really successful and I cannot wait to make more Second Bustle Era outfits. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have and you'd like to see more videos of me trying to make things then why not subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you'll be notified next time I upload a video. I do my very best to upload a new video every two weeks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!